Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to figure out how to set the transform pivot to a game object. Let's begin. So here we are in an empty scene. Now, if you're new to Unity, one of the first things you'll need to learn is how to make a health bar. So if you want to make it in the world, rather than in the UI, you will learn the way to display a sprite, which is first you create an empty game object, and then you add the sprite render component. Just like that, drag the bar sprite. And just like that, you have something that looks like a health bar. However, now if you try to scale it, you will notice that it scales from the middle. So in here, you would go into the scale and modify the X. And yep, there you go, it is scaling from the middle. So by trying to make it smaller, it will actually scale on both ends. Now a health bar is usually supposed to scale from right to left, so this will not work for what we want to do. And now in here, before we go further, I should point out that if you're using sprites, you can simply go into the health bar import settings, and here you can set the sprite pivot. So you could set it, instead of being in the center, set it on the left side, click apply, and as you can see, now the origin of the game object, which is right in there, is on the left, just like we set on the texture, and we can now scale this normally. So we can now move the X and works just like that. However, for now, let's ignore this ability for the purposes of understanding how Unity deals with transforms between parents and children and the difference between local space and world space. If you understand how transforms work, you'll be more capable of creating anything you want. For example, if you're using the white pixel trick that I normally use, you can't modify the texture pivot without a lot of hassle, so it pays to know how transformations work. So let's reset this back to center and keep looking at how transforms work. So essentially, a game object will always be transformed from its center. It doesn't matter what sprite it has or what box color is attached to it. The transformations are always done from the origin of that game object. So in order to essentially change the pivot, you need to be tricky with how you position your child game objects. So here in the health bar example, we want it to go from right to left as it shrinks. Now in order to do that, we can make this game object a child of another game object. So let's set the scale back to one. Now let's create another empty game object. Let's place it on zero, zero. Same thing for this one. Let's call this our health bar and let's call this our health bar sprite. And then we make this one a child of our container game object. Right here, the values that you see are the local values. So if I put the parent, let's say on 10, zero, and we check out the inspector for the child, it does say zero, zero. Again, this is the local position for this game object. Same thing with the scale and all the others. So if I scale by two, check out that one, and it still says just one. So let's reset this back to zero, back to one. And now if we modify the scale of the parent, we still have exactly the same thing happening. However, by moving the child, we can essentially change the pivot of the transformations when we transform the parent. So in order to achieve our desired effect of scaling from right to left, let's shift the inner bar sprite to the right. Now in here, how much you shift will depend on the scale. In this case, let's see the texture. The texture is 512 of width and we're using 512 as pixels per unit. So that means the actual size on our game engine is one unit. So if the sprite is one unit and we shift it by 0.5, you can see that the pivot on the parent is exactly on the left side. And now if we transform the parent, let's go in here and modify the scale.x, and you can see that it does indeed scale from right to left. So we position our inner sprite in such a way that we modify the transform pivot when we modify our parent. Now in order to make a completed health bar, let's add a background sprite behind it. Now we don't want the background to be scaled, so let's duplicate this sprite. However, let's make it not a child of that game object. So here we have the background using the same texture, but tinted in dark. We have set the sorting order for this one to be in zero and the sprite to be in 10. So the sprite shows up on top. And now we can put all of these elements inside a main container for the health bar. And just like that, we have all the elements that make up a health bar. Now, if we want to modify the size of the bar, we can simply go into this bar game object and modify the scale, and it does scale from right to left. The background always keeps the same scale, and the sprite gets scaled accordingly. So that's how you change a pivot in a transform. 
It's all about being tricky with how you place your children compared to your parents. Now, this works for scaling, as you saw, but it also works for every other transformation. So, for example, let's say I wanted to make a clock. So let's create a new sprite. And here I'm going to use the white pixel. So here is an image with a white pixel and I want to use this one as my clock hand. So let's make it rectangular. And now in here, I want to rotate it. So I'm going to move the rotation.z and I want to shift it like that. And as you can see, right now we have the exact same problem as previously. We are rotating from the very center. So let's solve this problem the same way we did with our health bar. So here we have our clock and container. Inside we have the object that actually contains the sprite. And now let's shift this object so that the pivot is on the left side. So this one has a scale of 4, so we shift it by 2. And again, just like with the health bar, we now have our clock hand container and we can rotate it on the Z and it does indeed act like a clock hand. So you can see how by modifying the pivot, you can create anything you want. Now let's also look at a scenario where you want to stretch a texture to a certain distance. So I want to show this texture going from 0, 0 all the way over to 10, 10. Now, one way we can do it is calculate the midpoint, which in this case would be at 5, 5, and we rotate the texture to point it. Or, again, we can be tricky with how we calculate our pivots and put this just like the one before. The container doesn't contain anything, and we put it on 0, 0. And again, we shift the bar sprite on the right, so just like that. So again, we have the pivot on the left side, and now if we want to hit 10, 10, we can simply rotate it on the Z, starting from that pivot, and then we calculate the scale needed. And just like that, instead of having to calculate a midpoint, you just put it on the origin, point it towards the target, and scale it accordingly. So again, if you're working in 2D, you can just change the pivot directly here on the texture import settings. However, in cases where you can't change the pivot or are dealing with 3D objects, it pays to know how the various position spaces work. Always remember that the inspector showcases the local transforms and not the global ones. So the inner one still says it's on 500 and on the parent it says that it's in there. So if I shift the bar to the on the X, I increase it, you can see that it follows that line. So there you have it. We'll learn how to modify the transform pivot of an object so we can scale and rotate objects just like we want to. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.